Recently, 167-year-old European bank Credit Suisse came to an abrupt end when it was sold to its rival UBS Group. So what led to the end of the one of the strongest banks in the world? Hi, I'm Monica Yadav and in this video, I will talk about Credit Suisse financial turmoil and the biggest losers, additional tier 1 or 81 bond holders in this whole fiasco. The Swiss bank didn't land into trouble overnight but was involved in scandalous activities for years. It has been hit by the number of scandals and losses. Let us look at the reasons behind its disintegration. The bank's misfortune began when Greensill, a British financial firm specializing in short-term corporate loans, met with a failure in 2021. Credit Suisse, which was particularly invested in the firm, was at the receiving end of massive losses after its collapse. After Greensill declared insolvency in March 2021, Credit Suisse shut down four connected funds in which it had invested $10 billion. Four weeks after Greensill collapsed, Credit Suisse suffered a further loss of $5 billion after the implosion of US hedge fund Archegos. In October 2021, Credit Suisse was involved in an alleged bribery scandal in Mozambique in connection with loans that it granted to two government-owned firms. Then, in March 2022, a judge in Bermuda ruled that former Georgia Prime Minister Bidzina Ivanishvili had suffered a loss amounting to $553 million due to the failures of an affiliate of Credit Suisse. The case was in relation to the actions of Patrice Lescodron, one of the top bankers at Credit Suisse, who was sentenced to five years of imprisonment by Swiss authorities on charges of forgery and fraud in 2018. Then in October 2022, the bank had a settlement of $495 million to the US state of New Jersey over mortgage-backed securities dating back to the 2008 global financial crisis. In the same month, it agreed to pay France 238 million euros to avoid prosecution on charges of money laundering and tax fraud brought before in 2016 over illegal accounts of French citizens. Now in a bid to quell the concerns of financial crisis, the Swiss authorities forced the merger of its two largest banks, UBS and Credit Suisse. UBS has agreed to pay $3.25 billion to acquire embattled Credit Suisse and under the terms of the rescue deal, while shareholders will get 0.76 francs per share, owners of $17 billion worth of traditional tier 1 bonds will lose everything. Now, let's talk about these 81 bond holders. So, what are 81 bonds? These bonds were created in the wake of the 2008 global financial crisis to absorb the losses. Using money raised through these bonds prevents the need for government-funded bailouts of precarious banks. These are a type of unsecured perpetual bonds that banks issue to improve their core capital base as per Basel III norms. The money raised through these bonds is kept aside as a shock absorber by the bank. When in trouble, banks can convert 81 bonds to equity or be written down. These bonds are long term and do not carry any maturity date. Because of a higher risk, they offer a higher yield. So what happened to 81 bond holders in the case of Credit Suisse? Why they are the biggest losers after the UBS bank took over the Swiss bank? 
Now in general, when a bank fails, the bond holders rank higher in the pecking order than the shareholders. But in the case of Credit Suisse, the shareholders will receive at least some compensation while the bond holders will not. So the question arises, why are shareholders being preferred over bond holders? Now, according to experts, the main reason shareholders will get compensation and bondholders will not is that Credit Suisse did not follow a traditional bankruptcy route. As it was taken over by other bank, the rules of a typical bankruptcy did not apply here. The banking regulators in the European Union and the Bank of England earlier this week reassured 81 investors and said that in case of future bank crisis, they would be given priority over shareholders. According to various reports, the investors might contest the bank's decision. Many legal firms are assembling a team of investors for potential litigation. With this move, the funding cost will go higher as the credit investors would demand higher risk premium across the spectrum with cost of 81 issuance potentially going into double digits. Hope you like this video. Till the next video on Business Unboxed, it's goodbye from us. Have a lovely weekend.